Hello, guys and girls. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I hope you guys are doing very well today. And before I forget, I would just like to say happy, happy new year. Uh, 2022 is upon us. And yeah, it's a great way or this is a great way to start the year out by having a narrated our time last video in my channel. Yay. Uh, in case you haven't been to my channel before or new and whatnot uh well just do know that this is my jam basically i just look at the recording of all my old art processes and i kind of just talk about what happened and what unfolded when i was creating that particular artwork and yeah <laughs> this is what i do in my channel uh, i do this in the hopes that you know maybe you could learn a thing or two from it um every single illustration has its unique thing that happens in the particular process of any of that particular illustration um and so yeah uh practically every single illustration anyone can learn a thing or two from just because well there's always just something to learn from every single thing because every single illustration is just unique so yeah um but anyways so, uh, uh, now that I got my introduction done and out of the way, I guess now would be a great time for me to start talking about exactly what is going on in the screen. What is going on in the screen right now is me tracing over my pen sketch of this particular artwork um, called 7 a.m. Flight. Um, this particular artwork started out as a daily spit paint prompt. The Daily Speed Paint is a group that I'm part of in Facebook. We do speed paints all the time. That's the whole jam of that particular group. We get 30 minutes to interpret four particular prompts, uh, which we could choose one of them. And then we get 30 minutes to draw something out of that prompt. So one of the prompts for that day, uh, what day was this? This was... Uh, seven three that's july <laughs> having to reinterpret those numbers okay so on july three one of the prompts for that particular day was early flight it's not called 7 a.m flight it was actually called early flight i didn't know what prompted me to change it to 7 a.m i think 7 a.m just sounds really cool so i figured might as well why not <laughs> change it to 7 a.m flight but the original prompt for or one of the original prompts for that day was 7 a.m flight which was what i did for that day and as you can see um i decided to draw two lovers that are saying goodbye in an airport um kind of makes sense because the guy's leaving yada, yada, yada it's an early flight and whatnot it's a bitter bittersweet uh kind of scene um, fairly simplistic and whatnot but yeah so I did a pen sketch of it I did it in about 10 minutes it was just about the only time I have during my lunchtime at work and as soon as I wrapped it up I took a look at it and realized you know what this has such a great potential for a speed faint for me to further develop the little 10 minute sketch that I did and so that's what I did for that particular weekend, I decided to take this 10 minute sketch and turn it into an hour and a half speed paint, which developed in this, into this very, very cool um, illustration. So yeah, that's how this thing got started. And I guess now I could continue talking about the process. So initially I traced over my original sketch and if you took a look at the original sketch the perspective on it was different uh, you could see it in the background right now you could see that um the perspective on it is more from above in a way where it's the camera view is kind of like looking down on the lovers that was the way it was originally set in this in the pen sketch I knew that the perspective was a little off and I knew that I wanted to edit it a little bit and that's the reason why I changed things around into this particular setting that I have now where the camera is lower and so that has a tendency to make uh, the horizon line. I'm trying to remember if the horizon line goes up if the camera is lower. Yes, the horizon line does go higher. Um, than what it was before i had to like close my eyes for a sec and just envision it the horizon line is obviously uh higher 
because I wanted to move the camera lower. Uh, this has a huge tendency to humanize the scene uh, when you move the camera lower into the ground. Um, and somebody pointed it out where if you have your point of view slash your viewer slash your camera like way high on top, it kind of feels like you're looking at things from a distance. It almost kind of um, takes you out from the scene, kind of puts you into like a third person perspective point of view versus if you move the camera lower, it feels more like you're getting into the scene and you're like with the characters and it's a little bit more intimate feel you know and i knew that that's kind of what is needed in this particular scene given the fact that you know it's depicts these two lovers saying goodbye in an airport and whatnot so um i think it was a smart move on my part and i wasn't consciously thinking of doing that when i was when i decided to change the perspective around when i went digital it was just kind of like a feeling that I had, you know, just by like looking at the the composition. I knew that it could just be better if I moved things around a little bit, and which is what I did, basically. Um, so I changed the perspective around. I traced. So basically, the only thing that was left from the original sketch was really just the two characters. I traced the two characters, and then everything else I just you know redid slash reinvented and whatnot. And then as soon as I had my line sketch, I basically did this quick coloring thing that I do. Um, basically, I have this set of palettes that I had picked out from Color Palette Cinema. Um, I just browsed through my collection of all these palettes I got from that particular website, basically. Randomly choose one. And as soon as I randomly choose one, I just basically lay down all these colors down, right? Um, without very much thought as to where things are kind of going to go. I mean, I, there's kind of a thought in my head um, where things are going to be. But they're more kind of just like a gut feeling, not really like a conscious thought. Everything is just kind of just thrown in there. Because eventually what I'm going to end up doing is smudging things around into recognizable shapes which is what i'm doing right now i'm kind of like smudging all those colors up into this nice little you know kind of soupy mess um and basically i get this nicely blended scene already that basically all i have to do is just paint over the scene to you know finalize and whatnot um so yeah, this is kind of like how I do my speed paint. I quickly lay down some colors, and then as soon as I lay down some colors, I smudge things around into recognizable shapes. And then as soon as I have my recognizable shapes, I start my detailing process, which is basically a three-step process. What I do is I delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper so that my shapes read way better. I also accentuate the shadows slash, you know, darken it a little bit more if I needed to darken it some more. And then, of course, I add highlights, which is my finishing touch. Um, you can see right now I did it two passes on the whole smudging thing. Sometimes I do one, sometimes I do two. I never ever really do three. If I do three passes, it's just on one specific part of the page, not all of the page. Um, so in this particular uh, illustration I did two passes throughout the whole thing so and then now you can see I'm starting my whole detailing process so I'm gonna initially work in the background first work all my way um, to the foreground and then I'll start detailing the foreground um, for now just watch as the scene unfolds and I'll come back a little later into the video and talk some more about this particular piece
All right, so at this point, we could pretty much tell that I am detailing the girl and I'm about close to being finished with detailing her. And what I'm going to do next is obviously the guy, so I'm going to be detailing the guy. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty straightforward uh, process. It's exactly like what I mentioned. It's a three-step process over and over again, delineate my edges, accentuate my shadows, and add the highlights and whatnot. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing in a guy. Uh, while that is going on, I guess now would be a great time for me to talk about my own personal assessment of this piece. I really 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 love this piece this piece is very very monumental for me it's very pivotal and i'll tell you exactly why um the past few videos i posted on here i've heavily talked about uh, I, I know i didn't talk about it in the last video i think i talked about it in one or two videos back and then in another video maybe three or four videos back but i was specifically talking about the color wheel and how the rgb color wheel is not your standard traditional color wheel that's been used throughout um the centuries in especially in acrylic painting um, I keep forgetting what it's called. I think it's the RYB model um, color wheel. But basically, uh, the complements of the traditional acrylic slash oil painting color wheel, um, the complements is different from the RGB color wheel. In the RGB color wheel, the cyan is far more prominent than in the traditional one now a lot of people argue that the rgb model is a much robust model and i do agree to a certain point that it is but <laughs> it has thrown me off completely because i've been employing this whole complementary color schemes in a lot of my older pieces but a lot of them end up being trash and i was always confused as to why and then it hit me with this particular piece as to the reason why the reason why is because the rgb model is not your standard color wheel for example the traditional complement of red is green but you can see in the rgb color wheel on the top right that red is opposite of cyan um, the traditional uh, complement of blue is orange not yellow the traditional um the traditional uh complement of pink is blue green not green so you can see that it's a little off you know um and so it took me forever because basically what ended up happening was when i threw all the colors onto this canvas like i said i didn't have much, very much conscious thought as to where things were going to go i was just throwing some colors around i knew i was going to depend on the shapes to help kind of make the painting basically and i had accidentally put the yellow and the lower left of the painting right i had accidentally put the yellow and since the characters are predominantly blues and reds they end up looking like purple right and so the whole character being slash having this whole purple tone to it and me accidentally putting yellow on the bottom left I, that's when i was just like why is this photo so pleasing why is this image so pleasing and one of my friends who watched me do this because i was streaming this um right and my friend was watching this he mentioned hey you know that that yellow looks so stunning yada, 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 blah 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 and then that's when it hit me the yellow is yellow's complement is purple which is what the characters are characters ended up being purple because they're predominantly blues and reds and i was like omg and so i <laughs> looked it up online and that's when i realized that people have been whining about this forever and i'm totally late to the party <laughs> i didn't know that there's this you know voice in the digital painting community that kind of pines for the traditional color wheel to be instated reinstated in either krita or photoshop or any of the popular painting programs the majority of the painting programs always use the rgb model it's a standard color wheel 
it comes with them no one ever really employs the ryb color wheel i'm pretty sure it's called the ryb I, i'm not entirely sure i could be misquoting it but you know for the sake of this conversation i'll just call it a traditional color wheel and so you know <laughs> i i didn't realize that this was a thing you know like i should have known i've been digitally painting for about 10 years now i it didn't occur in my head that this was a thing until like this year basically in 2021 um like i said i did this painting in, last year in 2021 i started digital painting in about 2010 so yeah roughly 11 years <laughs> not eight like I thought it was, but roughly 11 years before it finally hit my head. Why some of my colors are so off? And it's so interesting because I always go instinctive in my colors and sometimes I just nail it right off the bat, you know, because all these things that I learned from college 20 years prior just kind of end up showing up in my paintings instinctively, you know, without me really consciously thinking about it. But some of my paintings are just really horrifyingly horrible with the colors, you know, and I'm like, but I used the complementary color model or the split complementary and I didn't realize, yeah, I was using the complementary color scheme, but I was using the RGB color wheel with it, not to the to traditional color wheel. So of course my colors are going to end up being messed up. So so yeah i didn't realize that i was having this issue until this particular piece when i made this really huge accident of putting yellow on the bottom left so yeah i totally made bob ross so happy <laughs> with this particular painting because i could honestly say that i had a very 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 happy accident with this particular piece because if it weren't for this particular piece i wouldn't realize what exactly it was that i was having issues with color wise i was depending too much on the rgb color wheel i was depending too much on the split complementary complementary scheme without really consciously thinking that hey i i needed to take a look at the traditional color wheel to get my colors right so yeah i i just love this piece not only because it came out so good looking to me and some people might think it's all right but it's really good looking to me it's one of my better looking pieces not only do i think it came out all right i also learned a, a humongous lesson from it which is the traditional color wheel so yeah <laughs> But anyways, I, I think this is a wonderful video to talk about at the very beginning of the year just because it's a great piece and I learned so much from it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, but yes, that's the ending of my process. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. Happy, happy new year. I will see you guys in the next video. Good night. <laughs>